Hi folks, it's uh, Tim G5TM. Thanks for joining me again. I thought I'd look today at the G5 RV. Now, we've all got our views on the G5 RV. If there's one antenna that's going to split people down the middle, 50% is going to say it's wonderful, 50% are going to say it's a dummy load. Well, I'm one of those that's kind of in the middle. And uh, let's have a look at it and compare it maybe to a doublet. And by a doublet, I mean by uh, a dipole fed entirely by ladder line. Uh, to compare the performance and see how well the G5 RV fares as a multiband antenna. So I've used MMANA modelling software to have a look at this and let's see how we've uh, set things up on this. Let's take a look, shall we? So uh, the G5 RV, it's a flat top. We've got it at 8 metres above the ground. And don't forget the G5 RV is two 51 foot legs. That's 102 foot long. Uh, what's that in metres? About 31 metres or something like that. Uh, it's fed, of course, with 30, just over 30 and a half feet. It's a fraction over 10 metres of 300 ohm ladder line. And uh, in this case, it'll have a further 30 feet. That's 10 metres of RG58 coax going to a shack tuner. So the, uh, the intention is to try and replicate a sort of a typical, very ordinary sort of setup for the G5 RV. If we turn back again, we can see that for the doublet, uh, we'll compare it to a doublet. Again, 102 foot. This time, uh, again, similarly, I should say, a flat top, 8 metres above the ground. Again, 102 foot long, same length, uh, but this time fed with just over 20 meters of 450 ohm ladder line to a balanced tuner. So there we go. So we're comparing them both, same length of antenna, just fed differently with the same overall length of feed line. So let's take a look. So I started off by looking at uh, feed line loss. I just wanted to see what the G5 RV was like on different frequencies. So I looked at it in terms of the loss regarding the 300 ohm ladder line and then the loss associated with the RG58. Now, I haven't included anything on tuna loss or ballon uh, loss through heat, anything like that. I've just purely looked at the at the feed line. OK, so let's take a look, shall we? So on this table, you can see that on 80 meters, I'm using 3.75 as the frequency there. Uh, we lose, uh, well, the loss is about 1.76 uh, dB with 300 ohm, uh, 0.6 of a dB on the RG58. So overall, we're losing 2.36 dB uh, loss uh, with the combined feed line there. Uh, on 40 meters, a bit less, the combined loss is 0.86. On 20 meters, 0.7 dB, so quite livable. On 17 metres, a bit higher, 2, 2 dB, basically, with 1.5 dB of that gone on the RG58. 15 metres, 2.7 dB, again, fairly high-ish loss on the RG58. 12 metres, just over 2 dB, again, nearly 2 dB, uh, nearly all of it lost with the coax. And take a look at 10 metres at the bottom. Uh, because of the very high SWR we've, we've got uh, with that particular length of antenna, it's a three wavelength antenna on 20, uh, 28.45 megahertz. Uh, we're losing 6 dB just with the coax, it's nearly 7 dB overall. So the early impression is with the G5 RV that the higher in frequency you go, the greater the loss. So um, let's take a look at that now and compare it to the uh, equivalent length doublet fed with 450 ohm ladder line, shall we? So let's take a look at that. So in this table, uh, in yellow, you've just got the same figures we had before for the G5 RV per frequency. In blue, though, towards the end, you've got the overall loss of the 450 ohm straight to a tuner in the shack. And by the way, the tuner we're talking about here is a balanced tuner. So we're running the 450 ohm ladder line straight into the balanced tuner in the shack, okay? So we can see, therefore, that uh, if you look at the, the far right-hand yellow column, total 300 ohm plus coax, that's the total loss on the G5 RV feed line, uh, we can see, therefore, that the 450 ohm is better by about 1.4 dB on uh, 80 metres. And in fact, the last column there you can see shows the difference between them. Uh, on 40 metres, you can see the difference is about 0.65 of a dB, again, in favour of the 450 ohm ladder line doublet. 20 metres, it's just over half a dB again for the same uh, same antenna. On 17 metres, and in, up from there, it starts to get a bit more. So we're nearly 2 dB better off by running the ladder line straight to the bands tuner uh, on the of, on 17 metres on the on the on the 102 foot long doublet. Uh, for 15 metres, we're better off by 2.3 dB again on the ladder line doublet. 
on 12, just under 2 dB. But then again, on 10 meters, you can see that we've managed to negate an awful lot of that loss. If you look at the G5 RV, we're losing 6.8 dB. If we run that nub line directly to the tuner, we'd be losing 0.3 of a dB. So actually, if we run that ladder line directly to the tuner in the shack, rather than uh, adopting the uh, the half uh, 300 ohm and half um, well, coax arrangement of the G5 RV, uh, effectively we're better by six and a half dB. That's, that's a nest point and a fraction, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, at the end of the day, it'll, it'll make a difference somewhere. And clearly you've got a far better system, efficient system in terms of loss there. So overall, it looks like the 450 ohm ladder line option, especially on the higher bands, is uh, certainly a bit more of a winner. So I like to push the envelope a bit. So I've decided to look, what happens if we uh, reduce the size of the doublet a little bit and went for, say, an 88 foot doublet. Now, uh, the writings of a very famous uh, antenna theorist and, uh, well, an expert really, a guy called uh, Chebik, I think his surname was, C-E-B-I-K, he was now a silent key, unfortunately. But he, he has left a wealth of information about antennas. And he was under the impression that the 88 foot doublet would provide uh, very good broadside gain, especially on 20 metres, and would be quite usable on 80 metres and up. And in fact, he says the same thing about the 44 foot doublet, the half size for 40 metres and up. But we'll look at the 88 foot version today. And again, we'll compare it now again to the G5 RV and the 102 foot doublet, just to see the differences again in feed line loss. And we'll have a look as well in terms of the far field plot too. So let's have a look at the 88 foot doublet then. And again, as you can see, it's again eight metres above the ground. Again, it's fed with 20 metres of 450 ohm ladder line into a balanced tuner in the shack. So how does it compare, as it says there, with the G5 RV and the 102 foot entirely fed doublet with ladder line? Well, here we are. Here's the, uh, here's the difference. And the last column, uh, the last two columns compares the 88 foot doublet, first of all, with the G5 RV. And the very last column compares it with the 102 foot doublet, the ladder line fed doublet. And again, we're looking here at feed line losses. And we can see that for 80 metres, it's better than the G5 RV by about half a dB. And worse, if it's a minus figure, it means it's worse. So it's worse than 102 foot doublet by about a dB. That's probably because it's a shorter antenna. We've got a bit more reactance there, uh, 88 feet versus 102 feet. And by the way, in metres, I think 88 is, oh, what's that in metres? Uh, is it something like about 26 metres long, I think, isn't it? I think I got that kind of right. Anyway, on 40 metres, hardly a difference again. Uh, well, it's better than the G5 RV by 0.7 of a dB. It's not a huge amount. And it's actually slightly a very fraction better than the 102-foot version at uh, 0.05 of a dB. On 20 metres, you can see it's nearly half a dB better than the G5 RV and about, well, 0.2 of a dB worse than the 102-foot. Uh, on 17 metres... Again, you can see those G5 RV figures uh, in red there. Well, actually, it's better than the G5 RV by nearly 2 dB on 17 metres. This is the 88-foot version and is slightly better than the 102-foot version, but by very little. On 15 metres, it's better than 2.5 dB than the G5 RV and slightly fractionally better than the 102-foot version. On 12 metres, it's, as you say, 1.6 dB better, but slightly worse off than the 102 foot version. And finally, as per the 102 foot version, the 88 foot doublet uh, knocks the spots off the G5 RV on 10 metres, uh, 6.7 dB, rounding it up better, and is in fact better than the 102 foot doublet by 0.2 of a dB for feed line loss. So, um, well, overall then, the 88-foot doublet does a, pre a pretty decent job. And I thought I'd include that there because lots of people say they haven't got room for a G5 RV. But of course, um, you know, 88 feet is slightly less. I know it'll change things a little bit, but you can, of course, droop the ends of a dipole down a little bit too. So uh, the 88-foot doublet is certainly one perhaps to consider for 80 metres and up. Last thing I thought we'd check is the far field plot to see what the pattern's like, radiation pattern is like. Now, of course... The 102 foot uh, doublet and G5 RV will have the same radiation pattern. It's the, it's the same antenna as 102 feet, of course. So we can compare them together versus the 88 foot doublet. And let's have a look at the different bands. So turning our attention to 80 meters, look at that. Spot the difference. It's <laughs> practically the same. There's nothing real world at all different there between those two antennas. Let's move on then to uh, 40 meters. 
Very similar situation again, no real world difference there at all. Now on 20 metres, a bit of a different story because the 88 foot doublet, as I said earlier, I think, is what's known as an extended double zep on uh, 20 metres. Gives you a little bit more gain. It's about one and a third wavelengths long. So you can see there, look, the 88 foot doublet is in red and uh, well, uh, it gives you a lot better gain. And in fact, at its angle of peak gain, if you look at the figures below, uh, you can see it's about two and a half dB better off at 37 degrees. Uh, even at the lower angles, you can see it up to about 10 degrees. If you look at the right hand, uh, those two diagrams just above the bottom there, you can see that effectively it's got a little bit more gain at those lower angles too. So the 88 foot doublet is certainly very uh, useful at, on 20 meters. On 10 metres, well, 102 feet uh, does beat it a little bit in terms of, of gain there by about, uh, well, by a couple of dB. But again, the 88 foot dub bit is, is relatively competitive there as well. And in fact, in the higher bands, the 88 foot doublet uh, very much holds its own as well. So um, it's certainly an option compared to the, uh, to the longer versions of the G5 RV and the 102 foot lad line doublet we looked at earlier. So overall, what do we think about the G5 RV? Or what do I think of the G5 RV, I should say? Well, it's look, lots of people use it. They like it. It does a great job. A good friend of mine, uh, Kevin, over in Surrey, just up the, uh, the road from me, uh, he was a big user of the G5 RV. That's, I think that's what he used when he first got onto HF. He's gone up to the ZS6 BKW now, but that's that's a different uh, ball game. We'll look at that differently again, because I know a lot of people who've used G5 RVs think the ZS6 BKW is a better antenna. We're going to look at that separately again, okay? But uh, lots of people, as I say, including Kevin, like this G5 RV, made plenty of contacts on them. And of course, modelling doesn't give you the full story. It's not the real world, of course. But you can't deny it, especially on 10 metres, there's quite a difference in terms of performance. So uh, I'll just summarise a few points for you now if we look at this together. So I think the G5 RV is still a useful antenna, but has increasing losses at higher HF frequencies, especially 10 metres. It does rely on the run of what is fairly lossy coax to bring SWR down to tunable amounts on some bands. Again, I quote 10 metres because the SWR is about 70 to 1, has very high reactance because 102 feet is three wavelengths long. So you need that, that run of coax to bring it into somewhere tunable for your shack tuner. There's an awful lot of loss there as we see. Uh, a completely ladder line fed 102 foot doublet uh, exhibits less loss than the G5 RV. And as we go higher in frequency, the gap increases. The shorter doublet of 88 feet has similar feed line loss compared with a 102 foot lad line doublet and is still within a dB on 80 meters, even though it's a shorter antenna. And in fact, the eight, on 80 meters, the shorter 88 foot doublet has less feed line loss than the G5 RV and repeats it on all bands. And finally, with far field plots, the 88 foot doublet has practically identical gain to a 102 foot version, whether it's a G5 RV or whether it's a uh, the lab line fed version on 40 and 80, has better gain on 20 and is only really beaten on 10 meters by the 102 foot version by about 2 dB. So overall then, as the lesson is that it isn't just the far field plot you look at, you've got to consider those feed line losses as well. And uh, the next time you see uh, someone with a G5 RV and they've got an excellent SWR on 10 metres, we now know why. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe if you fancy joining a board. And here's another video coming up here for you. All the best and stay safe now and 7-3.